The Wild Horses of Sweetbriar by Natalie Kinsey Warnock, illustrated by Ted Rand. Read by Renee Ann Kinsley Houston. In the summer of 1903, when I was almost eight, my mother and I picked blueberries in the fields by the sea. We had just moved to Sweetbriar Island, off the coast of Nantucket. Papa worked at the Coast Guard station across the shallows. He worked such long hours that we would only see him once a week. Mama said we'd have to be strong and take care of ourselves. We were the only people on the island. Mama wished we had neighbors, but I was glad we didn't. I loved the island just as it was. Wood ducks and geese were always eating and quacking in the wild rice. Wild flowers and beech plums grew all over the island. The smell of wild roses in the wild sea, a mix of sweet and salty, was so thick I could have spread it on bread like jam. I picked daisies for Mama, a whole armful, and saw the wild horses. There were ten of them, brown and sorrel and dappled gray. They flew across the sand like wind-blown seeds, and their dark hooves splashed stars from the sea. I ran down the hill toward our house. It was just a tiny house, made of shingles that the wind and the sun had turned gray. Mama was outside, hanging at wash. Sheets flapped around her. Oh, Mama, I saw wild horses, all colors. Can we live here forever? Gracious, no, Mama said. You'll need more schooling and friends your own age. But in my heart, I knew I would only need wild horses in the wind from the sea. When Papa came home, I told him about the wild horses. This island was once connected to Nantucket, he said. The horses must have come to the island then, before the sea washed away the land in between. Mama said if we stayed on Sweetbriar much longer, I'd be wild too. But Papa just laughed. Let her run with the horses then. The days got shorter and the wind blew colder. I still loved being outside. I gathered driftwood from the beach and stacked it in the shed. One day, all the ducks and geese left, flying south and honking a sad song. We stored food for the winter. Mama dried the blueberries and made rosip jam and plum preserves. When Papa came home, he dried cod in the shed and sent to Boston for salt pork and flour to see us through the winter. Sometimes he brought fresh fish from the sea. Mama worried about Papa. His work was dangerous. The water was shallow around the island. Sometimes, in bad storms, ships got caught on the shoals and sank. Papa risked his life in crashing waves and lightning to save the sailors. Mama said we must pray for him. Snow fell in November and never melted, not once for that whole long winter. The wind blew the snow so hard it felt like needles and great drifts of snow piled up, burying the marsh grass that the horses ate. On Christmas Eve, we sat in the glow of the oil lamp and Mama read from the Bible. Papa would be home in the morning. We heard a sound like thunder and our little house shook. I ran to the window. The horses were pawing at the walls. Their shrill screams were as cold as the night. Can't we feed them, Mama? It's Christmas. Mama had baked bread and she took the loaves from the cupboard. I filled my apron with the last of our carrots. Mama opened the door. The horse's wild, hungry eyes glinted red in the light. Mama threw the bread and the horses rushed for it. I held a carrot toward one brown mare and I touched her nose before she snatched it away. As the winter wore on, the horses got crazy with hunger. They came every night to paw at our walls. Mama wished they could go away. The horses and the screaming winds made her nervous, but I wished we had a barn full of hay to give them. Sometimes on Sundays, Papa would go with me to the top of the hill where we could watch the gray winter sea. We saw the horses by the pond, their backs to the wind. They were so thin and their heads hung down. I wish we could feed them, I said. I know, said Papa. This is the hardest winter the island has ever had. Sometimes, Papa brought things from shipwrecks, coal and rope and once a keg of butter that had washed ashore. But there was nothing that horses could eat. Let's go back, Papa said. Your mama doesn't like being alone. I knew mama was lonely. 
I never heard her complain, but I saw the sadness in her eyes. We both missed Papa during the week, and we were tired of this bitter winter. But as sad as I was for the horses, I loved the island and the silvery snow, the cries of the seabirds and the roar of the sea. I loved the wild horses most. I would have given them the food on my plate if Mama had let me. They're strong, Mama said. They made it through hard winters before. But I knew the horses were starving. I took straw from the ticking I slept on and carried it to the hill. The horses rushed for it and pawed for more. I could count their ribs. Would spring come in time to save them? Every night I prayed for Papa and the wild horses. Then, one night, Mama shook my shoulder. Listen, she said. I heard the wind blowing, but it was a warm wind and the eaves were dripping. The snow was melting. The horses were safe. Papa came home one day in the spring. He was being restationed to Cormorant Island, and so we left Sweetbriar when the roses were in bloom and the island air was sweet with their perfume. Cormorant Island was settled, and Mama was pleased, but I would watch the sea and see the ghost of horses crossing the sand. I'm older now, but I never went back to Sweetbriar. I was afraid the island wouldn't be as I remembered. Someone told me more houses had been built and the horses had been caught. The sea might be just blue now, and the wind-blown meadows might look like weeds. But my only year on Sweetbriar, the frosty trees were tipped with stars, and I felt at home with only the wind and the wild island horses that rose from the sea.